Hey everyone, my name is Lucas, and today I'd like to talk about energetic systems, specifically the one I use myself, the Cauldrons of Posey. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'd like to talk about the old Irish energetic system called the Cauldrons of Posey. The cauldrons of posy are energetic fonts within the body from which our energy can be channeled or distributed. Think of them as energetic storage pots. There are energy pools helping to operate and maintain different aspects of the self. Now, you might be asking, is this just another form of the chakra system found within South Asian philosophy? The quick answer is no. The chakras are gateways in the body through which our energy flows. It's how they transition through the body. The cauldrons of posy are not gateways. They're swirling pools of energy that help to feed and operate our mind, body, and soul, each kind of dealing with a different aspect of the self. Something to note that's interesting, at least in my mind, is that the cauldrons of posy bear a striking similarity to a practice found within Chinese medicine. Within that practice, they also have three energy centers. They are found in the same positions and they're called dantains. I apologize if that's not pronounced correctly. I don't speak the Chinese languages. But it translates to cauldron and they behave very similarly to their old Irish counterparts. I think it's really interesting that two separate and distinct cultures were able to come to the same conclusions about this topic. Albeit, there are a few small variances, but at least in my mind, uh, it adds some legitimacy to the practice. Now for a bit of history. The Cauldrons of Posey were first written about by an Irish feely, or divine poet, in around the 7th century. But it wasn't until the 14th century that we see them fully documented in a manuscript. Within the manuscript was a poem, and in the poem it outlined the locations of the three cauldrons in the body, as well as their uses and how to maintain them. Unfortunately, there is no documentation of the cauldrons before that point as the pre-Christian Celtic peoples used oral tradition to pass down their practices. Unfortunately, that means they didn't write anything down. So, the true age of the cauldrons is unknown, but could have origins before that point. Now, this is just going to be my interpretation of what I've read. Take from it what you will, um, and I encourage you to read the translations of the poem for yourself for more information and to see what you make of them. Again, this is just my opinion, so take from it what you will. The three cauldrons are the cauldron of warming or incubation, the cauldron of vocation or movement, and the cauldron of wisdom. Now, each of these cauldrons can be found in three different positions. The first position is standing right side up with a roaring flame underneath. This typically means that the cauldron is well maintained and properly stimulated. The second position is on its side with a dim flame, usually with its contents spilling out. And this typically means that it is beginning to grow neglected and stagnant. The last position is completely upside down and unlit, snuffing out its own flame. This typically means that it is either unused or completely closed. It's important to know that these positions are mutable, meaning they can be changed with a little time and effort. The first cauldron that we're going to talk about is the cauldron of warming. It's located near the base of the torso. You can find it in between your tailbone and your navel. This cauldron is said to rule your physical self, governing over physical vitality and general health. And personally, I believe it's also the seat of our ancestral or genetic memory. There in the pit of our stomach, we get those gut feelings, those things that keep us safe or lead us in the right direction. I like to think that these are memories given to us by our ancestors. Now, this cauldron's position often mimics a person's general physical well-being. It's said that a healthy baby is born with a cauldron sitting upright, as most babies are born physically healthy. Although, if born with illness, it can be found tipping on its side, symbolizing the baby's illness. As we grow and age, the cauldron can move positions as well, tipping on its side if we are sick or unwell. To turn its position back 
upright or to simply maintain its position there, take care of yourself. Eat well, exercise, try to stay healthy and avoid sickness where you can. Look after and maintain your physical body, essentially physical self-care. Some other things you can do to help maintain this cauldron's position are engage in the physicality of life, interact with your body in different ways, ground yourself in the moment and experience life as it unfolds around you. Essentially, presentness. The second cauldron that we're going to talk about is the cauldron of vocation. It's located in the center of the torso, near the heart. This cauldron is said to rule emotion and is the source of every feeling that we have. This cauldron's position tends to mimic a person's emotional depth, complexity, and mental health. When we are born, this cauldron is found on its side, tipping over and spilling its contents onto the ground. There's a reason for this. As kids, we can't really process our emotions very well. They kind of just explode out of us, changing at the drop of a hat. We also have a tendency to feel on a very basic level at that age. Happy, angry, sad, hungry. We lack emotional complexity. But as we age, experiencing more of life's joys and heartaches, it can begin to rotate. Some of the emotions and experiences listed in the poem to assist in turning it upright are longing, grief, jealousy, joy, physical intimacy, and artistic slash spiritual pursuits. Now, it's important to note that some have interpreted the poem to read that positive emotions turn the cauldron upright and negative emotions turn it back down towards being upside down. Personally, that's not how I interpret it as it is slightly vague on the subject. Um, another thing is that sometimes within the pagan and witchcraft community, um, we tend to shy away from negative emotions and focus on the positive, but a balanced and healthy expression of all emotions within the self is what leads to energetic abundance and true balance within ourselves as well. Another thing to mention is that healthy expression and understanding can lead to wisdom. This is important because it means that focusing on this area can also help to turn the third and final cauldron. So, the third and final cauldron is the Cauldron of Wisdom. This one is located in the center of the head. This cauldron rules, you guessed it, wisdom and knowledge, both mundane and spiritual. This energetic center is thought to be the source of awen, or divine inspiration, a concept found within current day Druidic practices and their Celtic predecessors. This cauldron is found completely upside down when we're born. At birth, we know almost nothing, but through dedication, learning, and understanding, not only of ourselves, but the world around us, we can begin to turn it upright, filling ourselves with knowledge and wisdom. Although there are some who choose to remain ignorant, which if you think about it, the overturned cauldron snuffing out its own flame is the perfect image for those people that are closed-minded. Some ways to help turn and fill your cauldron of wisdom include Study in a wide range of subjects, both magical and mundane. Mindfulness, meditation, channeling source, whatever that might be for you, the universe, awen, the gods, etc. Different types of divination, empathy, skillfulness, and embracing the trials and tribulations of life, as hardship and failure can often teach us more than success. Now, this has been kind of like a simple breakdown of the cauldron's basic attributes. Now, for some homework, if you will. If you're looking to begin engaging with the concept of the cauldrons of posy, one thing I can recommend is meditation. Meditate on those specific areas within your body. Close your eyes and place your hand on those areas. Bring your attention to those places and see what happens. What do you see? What do you feel? What emotions come up for you when you interact with those specific places? What position do you sense them to be in? And how do you think that you can work to straighten them out within yourself? The next step is to try and meditate or work on turning your cauldrons into their upright positions and see what happens. I suggest you keep track of things and see what changes happen within yourself or your practice. 
you might notice you feel more energized by working with the cauldron of warming, or that divination practices might begin to feel easier if you work with your cauldron of wisdom. If you're a caster and casting magic, you can try to pull energy or channel energy through these places to assist you with certain workings. A perfect example is if you're doing a healing spell or ritual, you can channel energy through the cauldron of warming as it deals with physical health, and you might see it aid your spell. Another thing you can try for those path workers or journeyers out there is I suggest journeying or traveling through or in to the cauldrons and see where you end up. I know at least for myself, it was a very interesting and healing experience. Just remember when journeying and with any magical practice to always be safe. Now, I hope this video has been informative as I feel it's been really long, but I've also only scratched the surface of this topic. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. I am by no means an expert, but I always try my best to share what information I do know. Also, if you'd like to give the poem a read for yourself, I'll link the translation I used down below, as well as some of the commentary. Well, that's it for this video, and I hope to see you soon in another. And as always, may your path be interesting, as there's nothing worse than being bored. Have a good one. Oh my goodness, this is like the fourth time I've had to record this because I keep noticing things are wrong in the background. <laughs> oh, okay, let's try this again. Cauldron into its upright position. That's not right. I should have said cauldrons and not cauldron. It's locured. Locurded. Locurded? That's not a word. That's really awkwardly worded. Some ways to help turn your cauldron of warning. <sighs> Warning. That is not one of the cauldrons. <laughs> the energy. Er, the energy. <laughs> I keep tripping over myself. Blah, 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 blah.